I'm Sam Pittman, assistant head coach at Northern Illinois University and offensive line coach. I uh, want to deal with this tape about basic fundamentals. Uh, on this tape, we'll, we'll learn how to, at least how we teach, uh, a, lot of, a lot of different ways to skin a cat, but at least how we teach the base block, the down block, the back block, the way we pull, the uh, way we hit, attack second level, uh, and of course double teams. I do want to talk a little bit about some key things that I think are important. And uh, the number one thing to me is the stance. And uh, I want to teach the stance just real quick how we do. And, and, and it goes back to uh, a stance that you can get in and out of comfortably, but that's uh, something that, you know, obviously if we're running a 40-yard dash and we fall step, then it's over. And we talk to our players a lot like, about that because if we take a false step out of our stance, it's over. We're done. Uh, obviously, we know we need all seven, two tight ends and five linemen or a tight end to, to, to be successful on their block because if one guy does, uh, makes a mistake, one guy false starts out of his stance or, or makes a bad uh, 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 movement because of his stance, then uh, we, we're defeated, we, we, we're not gonna make yards. So I wanna talk a little bit about some, a few items here that we think are very important. In a stance, uh, here's how we teach our stance. Our, our feet are shoulder width apart with, with our down hand. If my right hand's gonna be down, my, uh, my right foot's gonna be back. My toe's gonna be uh, with uh, about the middle of my, uh, my inside foot. And uh, we want my, feet to be in line with my shoulders. Now, we can handle our feet being a little wider than our shoulders, but we certainly don't ever want our feet to be narrower, narrower than our shoulders. It's always got to be shoulder width or just slightly wider apart with the toe, uh, toe end step uh, stagger. We want our feet and shoulders to be in line and we want our knees and hips to be in line. And how we get that is, is that when, when we get into our stance, we want to squat to get into our stance. Uh, you know, a lot of us, and, and I've had them and, and you might have them too, but when they go to reach, what happens is this knee goes inside. Or a lot of times bigger, heavier kids, their knees go outside. So how you can keep your knees and your hips in line is by squatting to reach. And so what we want, our feet and our shoulders in a line and our knees and hips in a line, and then we want to reach. So our feet are totally on the ground, toes facing forward, not slightly in or anything, toes facing forward, and we're going to squat and then we're going to reach. And we're going to reach out there until we're going to try to press the reach now. We're going to try to reach, but we're going to reach until we feel strain on our Achilles. And when we feel strain on the Achilles, we're going to put our hand down. Now, a lot of times that hand is going to be just slightly inside this kneecap. But really what you do, instead of going around the front of it and kicking his hand out from under the front of it, I had some coaches do that to me. I can't do that because I'm afraid I'd get whipped nowadays. But, but whenever you go out there, instead of kicking his hand out from underneath him, check his shoulders. And if his shoulder angle isn't square, in other words, if his shoulder angle, this shoulder's up, let's say, if this shoulder's up, well, then he may be resting on his hand, resting here, he may have his hand up, or he may have his hand too far inside. So all the adjustment, when you, once he's got his, his feet and his shoulders in line, his knees and hips in line, all the adjustments that you want to make are to his shoulder level because you want him to be level and you don't want him to have a high shoulder or in this case a low shoulder and it all will be off adjusting either this hand or this hand to get it all leveled up and then you got to get his eyes up we have a saying you know you can't block what you can't see and and your feet will always follow your eyes and those are two things that I think are correct obviously uh, we're walking down the street and we're looking over this direction then then our feet are going to follow. We don't use it as a negative. We use it more as a positive because if I can get my head up and my eye on my target, my feet will get me there. And, and, and we believe that. And so we talk a lot about our feet will follow our eyes and, and, and so far. Our weight 
of our body is going to be wherever our head is. And, uh, and so if my head is located down the middle of my body, then my weight is going to continue to be down the middle of my body. Once I shift my head either forward, now my weight's forward, backward, my weight's back, inside, my weight's on the inside half, and, and so forth. Once I do anything with my head, my weight is going to follow my head. And so there's a lot of different times when we teach blocks that I think we have to be real conscious about where our head is, not on placing it inside or outside, because once you get your frame, your head outside your frame, that's where your weight's going. But for example, if I was teaching pass protection for an inside guard, and I sit, and I sit right here, and I wanted to cover him up nose to nose, the only thing that I'd want slightly inside that defender is my head. Why? Because now I've just put my weight on the inside half of my body. So I think it's important for uh, your players to understand that wherever their head positioning is, that's exactly where the weight of their body is going to be. I think the, the whole key in a lot of things that we teach is our first step is going to be position, our second step is going to be up the field. And our second step is the attack and it's up the field. The key for us is that attack foot shoulder has to be down. And we talk about it being down and we talk about it being on a left track. So my first step, regardless of what I'm teaching, how I'm doing, my first step on everything, we never step forward on our first step. Unless we're running a quarterback sneak and everybody's wedging. But our first step's positioning, whatever that may be, inside zone, stretch, uh, uh, double team, whatever it may be. And my second step has got to get up the field. When that second step gets up the field, that shoulder, whatever that may be, if that second step was here, this shoulder has got to be down on a lift track. If it was here, I was running inside zone this way, bam, bam, it's got to be down, and I have to be on a lift track. A lot of guys teach uh, bouncing that thing and then lifting. To me, and, and I'm sure it's right, but to me, bouncing means pushing. And it's very simple. If I'm going to lift anything, what has to happen? Well, I have to get a wide base. When I lift something, my hips automatically, automatically go down and they're underneath me. I'm not guaranteed that I'm going to be on the whole way to my feet. So I'm going to have my weight on the whole, I'm going to have my weight on the inside of my feet. I'm going to have a wide base and my hips are going to be down by doing one thing, by lifting. When I push anything, sorry about the view, but when I push anything, I have got to go. It's impossible for me to push anything and my toes not be in the ground. So now if I'm pushing, I got my hips up and my toes in the ground versus lifting with my feet in the ground, my hips down. So for us to roll the hips, for us to get the hips underneath us, all we talk about is getting on a lift track right now. When we talk about the punch, and uh, again, some things that are kind of simple for us, but when we punch, we want to punch uh, with the palm of our hands, but really we just we want our thumbs to be towards the sky. Um, I know it sounds corny, but you know, uh, thumbs to the sky, elbows won't fly. Uh, uh, whatever kind of catchphrase you can use to make make them understand. But uh, again, it's impossible for me uh, to allow my elbows to fly out if my thumbs are up. And I don't mean that you're going to punch with your thumbs up, but the angle of your thumbs have to be up. If your angle of your thumbs are up on your punch right here, you're going to lock into this power zone and your, and your elbows are going to stay tight to the body. If my thumbs go sideways, my, my obviously my elbows are going to go out. Two things to think about there, and of course, 
I don't lift anything like this. Everybody's going to lift like this. So uh, you can't possibly, uh, your elbows can't fly if, you, if, you're, if your thumbs are up. So I think that's probably a key enough reason alone. But obviously, you want to, when you punch, you want to be on that left track. And, and you can't certainly lift anything uh, with your thumbs angling towards each other. Double teams, uh, we'll talk about it on the film, but when I double team, I just think the, the, the main thing on a double team is if I'm on the inside of the, of the double, excuse me, I want to be a one-hand defender. I want to be a one-hand, a down-shoulder, left-track defender. If I'm on the outside, I want to bring two hands on a left track. And uh, the main thing on a double team is that you want both men to hit the opponent at the same time. You don't want a, a here and then another guy. You want both guys, we call it one pad. You want both guys on him at one time. And uh, in this video, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, show you how we, we do that. Uh, on the back block, we'll say it on the video too, but the one key is that you want to suck the air out of the back block. In other words, don't position a back block, go attack a back block. It'll be a, one of the few things that you do where you bounce an opponent off, but open up at a 45 and go attack that back block. Whatever air he gives you now, take it, try to bounce it off of him. We're trying to work our hips on the opponent. We always want to work our hips on an opponent and never away, and we'll talk about that on, and show you examples on this, on this tape. But you never, ever want to throw your hips away from an opponent because what you've lost is leverage at that point. Always try to attack back on him, wherever he may be. That doesn't mean that I go to reach a guy and he flies out this way. Well, if I throw my hips back on him, I'm still creating space regardless. Uh, so always, we always want to be in attack mode with our hips. Never, always on, never away. Always move your opponents with your hips and your feet, never with your upper body. And of course the reason is, is because if I ever turn my upper body, my feet have to go on the ground. And if my feet go on the ground, then I'm dead. My feet have no, I can't wake my feet back up. So I never ever want to turn anybody with my upper body. I always want to turn them with, move them with my hips. How you start is how you finish. A lot of times we talk a lot about the finish and, and all those things. And uh, to be honest with you, you ain't going to get a finish unless you get a start. So we talk a lot about the steps and the footing. We don't guess with our opponents. We attack the first two steps and then we roll into it. But how you start is how you finish, not, hey, let's get a finish. You can't get a finish if you don't teach a, a nice, aggressive, uh, attacking uh, start. Um, my dad always taught me this too, and, and it made a lot of sense to me, but I believe that if you're going to practice, you practice exactly what you're going to do in a game. You practice everything you're going to do in a game. Make sure you keep your script and write it down and write it off what you've done individual-wise. But I think it has to be on people, it has to be on targets and moving targets, and practice it because uh, if you if you don't practice it, then and they don't do it correct in a game, then I think it's the coach's fault. To be honest with you, with us and and uh, I believe that if our if our players don't do it correctly, then uh, they haven't failed. We we failed the players. So practice everything and only. Uh, what you're going to do in a game is a kind of a key thing that we that we do. The last couple things here, I think, number one is, and we'll show you this drill. But what it is is we hang our hands here and then we pick them up. I do not believe that I can, you know, really it's a leverage game is what it is. It's a it's a leverage game inside and and up and down. If I'm underneath a man, then I've got him leveraged. Assuming that I've got inside leverage with my hands. But what happens a lot of times, guys will bring their hands from the ground to the opponent. And what they've never done is they've never established leverage on themselves. I believe, and 
Heck, I may be wrong, but I believe that the only way I can get a leverage on an opponent is I have to first establish leverage on myself. I don't believe that I can have no leverage on myself and get leverage on the opponent. I don't believe that can happen. So the first thing I have to do, you know, we used to teach to rock and those things. We talk about just picking it up because what we want to do is we want to teach our players to pick their hands up so they don't get this because, again, that's a push track or they don't get this, which again, I don't think you can get inside leverage on an opponent until you establish on on yourself. So pick your hands up, establish leverage on yourself so you can shoot and lift on your opponent. Another thing, the last two things here is, is uh, make sure when you're running your plays and stuff like that, that you find angles. I don't care if, if we're betting double teams. I don't really care if we're better than our opponent, if we're not, and this, that, and other. If we're better than them, we can be a lot better than them if we're finding angles and we're finding double teams to be successful with. If we're not quite as good as them, I think we can be closer as good as them if we're finding double teams and angles. I don't think we can ask our guys to be one-on-one -on -one blockers against someone that's uh, better than them. And, and Coach Novak's been has taught me a lot with that in the fact that not only are you looking at defenses and fronts and structures, you're looking at individuals. And do you want to attack this individual? Do you have a good matchup and those things and that? And, and your, your, your matchups are always going to be better when you're finding, when you're double teaming people and when you're angling. And then the last thing is uh, certainly don't be afraid to experiment. Uh, some of our best plays that we have right now are, are from uh, throwing it out there and saying, hey, can we do it? I remember we, we played Alabama a few years ago and we down blocked their tackle and end and pulled our guard and centers the first time we ever did it and we had a little success with it. But th everything from the game of football has come from somebody experimenting and uh, make sure that with these tapes that you look at them and you find out what's good for you and then find out something that's even better because uh, we're teachers and we're coaches and, and I think we'd be uh, uh, hurting ourselves and our profession if we didn't get out there and experiment and try to do something better and always make the game better. So make sure you take from these tapes and then do your own thing and try to even get better with them. First thing we do every day at practice is, is we're going to do this hands. And I know it doesn't look like a whole bunch, but as we talked about earlier, I don't believe or we don't believe that you can establish inside leverage on your opponent unless you first establish inside leverage on yourself. So this drill, basically, we're hanging our hands and then we're going to pick them up and we're trying to punch up. Uh, on a lift track and we're talking about the way but we're trying to punch up with our hands and basically we're trying to pick them up into our frame we talked about a roller versus a, a guy that's going to punch and and a lifter versus a pusher and you certainly if you see right here we're pushing this bag and uh, we're getting our hands up but we have to get it back lifted and this is just a drill that we do every day. Obviously, you can see how he's getting his hands back up in his frame and then on a lift track. And we want him to try to get on the lift track as much as possible. And our base block. When we're base blocking somebody, our first step, again, is going to get us in line with our running back. So our base block for us is inside zone. So his first step is going to get his shoulder slightly open with the back. There's the first key, but the second key is that we want his second leg up the field slightly inside the shoe of the defender. Now why we open up our first step is so we can get our backside shoulder down. I don't believe that you can get both your shoulders under leverage. I don't believe you can. But I know this, that if this, this is my position step, number one. Number two is an attack step. It has to get up the field. 
when it gets up the field, this shoulder has to be down or it has to be under for leverage. And now we're on a lift track. As I showed you before, pushing versus lifting and what it does to your hips and your feet. We're going to step, open our shoulders up with the back number and so we're going to cover his outside shoe. Number two is going to get up the field slightly inside this shoe and we're going to be on the lift track. This is a three step. We don't believe in not taking uh, full speed reps. So we don't progress very often. This drill is a progression drill and it's really the only one we have. But if you can see right here, the tackle is, is going to open his shoulders on his first step with the back. Number two is going to get up the field, up this shoe, and he's going to have a down shoulder on a lift track. Let's see if he does it. Good. And you know, I think while we're talking here, I think a lot of guys talking about, oh, well, my guy, you know, I used to teach the shoulder block and all that, and my guy... He doesn't have any power on his hands. Well, the reason, in my opinion, that he doesn't have power with his hands is because we've gone so much with teaching hands, and if my hand beats my second step, or if I'm on a push track with my hands, then I certainly don't have any power because the only power I have is in my shoulders and my hand. But if I'm on a lift track, the power doesn't come from my hands. The power comes from my shoulders, my hips, and my legs if you get on a, a lift track. So a lot of guys that are having trouble with not being powerful with their hands are basically on a push track, and you have got to get yourself on a lift track just like this guy right here. And you'll see his second shoulder, second step getting up the field, his shoulder. Right now, that shoulder right there on a base block for us, that ought to be the same look as what this back standing back here's got. This look right here. Open here, number two ought to get up the field and he ought to be on a jam lift track with a down shoulder. And again, this is a, this is a progression drill for us and we usually don't, we don't progress a whole lot, but you can see this guy right here concentrating on that backside shoulder down or that attack step shoulder down. You can see how he's getting his shoulder right now. That ought to, again, look like the running back for us. A lot of guys in the past have called this a bucket step. We don't. We just call it a position step. Number two ought to get up the field, and he's going to be on that left track right now. That backside shoulder should be down, just like this. Bam. Does that look like our running back? It should. This shoulder should be down underneath the fender. What the heck is leverage? Well... Leverage is I'm under him. If he's seven foot tall, I'm 6'10", I'm leveraged. If he's five foot tall and I'm 4'10", and, and I'm then I'm leveraged. That's why I don't like to do a lot of work in the shoots because the shoots always stay the same level. We like to do things on people because they change levels. And so we, all we want to do is we, all we want to do is we just want to be leveraged. Obviously, everything you're going to do, you're going to do it one side, and then you're going to do it the other way. This doesn't look like a whole lot, but it, it's really a great thing to get you started on your footwork. Again, guys, a lot of times they'll progress. They'll go one, two, three, and all that. I just don't think that you're ever going to progress into a, in a game, so I just don't know why in the world you would ever not go full speed with your blocking schedule uh, here as you can see right here, you know, we obviously do things wrong too. You see how the second step's not getting up the field? I've got no power. All that was upper body. If I don't get it up the field, I'm all upper body and certainly can't be successful if I'm all upper body. Then again here, we're talking about, this is inside zone, and we've already talked about how we want to always throw our hips on the opponent, never away. In other words, we don't ever want this we just, like we talked about, we don't want these hips to go away from our opponent because we, we don't know where the back is. Our back's going to be good enough to move from a moving target. Once we've declared where the, we, we're not good enough to declare where the back goes. That's not our job. 
Our job is to get leverage on him, get movement, and let the back be a football player. So this right here, and again, I learned this from Bob Wiley. Bob and I coached together at Cincinnati, and Bob was big on this five-yard to finish. And if you'll notice, these guys are going to be tight in here in their power zone with their hands, and then they're going to lift and push them off of them at the end. Again, if they're already extended with their hands, what are they with their arms? They're a pusher. And you certainly don't want them to be pushers. You want them to be lifters. And if they're lifting, their hips will automatically follow them. It's a good job of the finish. Now lift him up. Lift and finish. Good. Lift. Lift and finish. Good. Right there. And basically all we're doing right here again, we just base blocked. Now you'll see right here we're out, of, we're out of control. First step's good, second step's good, third step's not. Basically I have thrown my hips away from him, now I gotta get them back on him. Versus this kid right here, coming through here, nice job here. Good step, left, left, hug him up, get him off. And again if you're gonna do it one way you have to certainly do it the other way. And all you're doing here is in the power zone, trying to finish on a lift track, trying to keep your base nice and wide. Like we talked about before, if you're, if you're on a lift track, your base has to be wide. If you're on a push track, you have no chance but to be narrow in your hips. We like to work the second level. When you're working second level, you have to work second level whether you're going inside or outside zone or whatever your plays are. And what we do is, I, you know, we don't really talk to them about position. Uh, am I inside half, outside half? Where's my cage and all that stuff. What we talk to them about is departure angles from the line and slowing down or speeding up. So if we were running inside zone, we want to depart at the inside zone angle and then we want to be slow. And then he's going to give us a shoulder. We're going to blow it up and lift. And uh, that's what this drill here is for. I don't think, you see his cage go down, he's got to get his head up. I don't think that you can just assume that a guy can do a second level block if you haven't practiced it. Uh, my pops for a long time always, you know, talked about practice what you do in a game and nothing else. And, and uh, if you go to our place, I don't know that we're great just out, out unbelievable drill people, but I will tell you this, that we're going to do exactly what we do in the game and everything in the game. And uh, Larry Smith was great about that at Missouri. You know, he said, you get what you emphasize, and, and it made a lot of sense to me. You go one way, you have to go the next. The only thing I don't like about this rep right here is you see this right shoulder? It should be down. He's attacking from his left to his right, that attack step shoulder should be down and it's up. And you see how the, his left shoulder was down. This attack shoulder should be down. All it is, you're talking about a leverage game again. Left, 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 left. Get him off. Good. Pretty good job here of rolling the hips up through on a left track. Right there. Left track. Good. Again, you can tell when a guy lifts, his base comes wide. Good. Now, on the reach block, when we go for a reach block, our first step has got to be, and I'll just reiterate real quickly what we've talked about before, it has to be somewhere outside the frame. The wider he is, the deeper my first step has to be. But the bottom line is my second step has to get up the field, up the half, and because my second step is always my attack step, my my shoulder, in this case he's going to the right, my attack step and my attack shoulder has to be down. And then the next thing I want to, I want to fit that outside half. I'm a one-handed player at the beginning if, and then I am going to get my hips back on the opponent. So you'll see here he's stepping outside the frame, you'll see him on a down shoulder lift right here, and now I want his shoulders, I want his hips back on him. He should get his hips right now, back on him, there you go, good. Bam, bam, get your hips back on him, real nice. 
even though we're reach blocking here, we don't want to ever throw our hips. A lot of guys teach the reach block where they get out here and then they throw their hips back here. Well, when you do that, number one, you don't know where the back is. So if he's back here, this guy's just going to slip you and make the play. And the second thing is this back right here, somebody might have made a miss block out here this back may want to cut it behind you so you never ever ever want to throw your hips away from opponent always get them back on him that's a real good example right here by this left guard right here how he fit that you see you'll notice every one of them's got the backside attack step shoulder down and then he's going to get his hip get your hips back up on him real good same thing here get your hips back on him See how his backside shoulders down, open, down, left, left, left. I'd like to see his hips back on him a little better. I think he's swinging them away from him, just like this guy, real good right here. Shoulder down, first step outside the frame, second step up the field, up the half, shoulder down on a lift track. It's a good, good rep. You'll see again, we emphasize a lot about the backside shoulder being down on a lift track. Obviously you go one way, you're going to have to go the next. You'll see every one of them fit in the outside half. That first step, you know, it's got to be somewhere outside the frame like we talked about. But really it's a position step to get your second step up the field, up the half and get the down shoulder down, the backside shoulder down on a lift track, just like that. Just like that. Get your hips back on him. Real good. Hips back on him. Get them back on him. A lot of guys teach, you know, when they get to that point to butt block. But we never have. And I know butt block's a good scheme and all that stuff. We just never had. And I'll be honest with you. Part of it is because I don't know nothing about the butt block. I don't know how to stop and all that and pop your butt on some guy. But I do think that if you work the fit and you always throw your hips back on him, I think you'll get the same principle as a as a butt block. And then you have to obviously do your second level stuff. And when you do the second level here, you just have to make sure you're attacking to the right. You have to make sure again that your backside shoulder, your attack foot shoulder is down. Because if it's up, you're going to get blown up. It has to be down. This shoulder, bam, right there, it has to be down. And you're just going to try to blow the shoulder up. If it's up like this, this was a little bit, you've got a chance to get uh, blown up. Bam, get it down. Good. It's got to be down. See how this tackle tried to work his shoulder down right here? Work it down. Work it down. Good. And then he got his hips back on him because if that shoulder's down, you're going to get your world blown up. Get it down. Bam. There it is. Good. Get it down. Bam. Lift. Good. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot, but it, it, it just real good. Real good right here. Angle's perfect. He's got his down shoulder. He's got his attack shoulder down and then on the lift track and try to get the weight back on him. Obviously, you go one way, then you go back the other. We'll look at this just real quickly going through here. Don't like this one so much. I'd like to see this backside shoulder down. We call this old school. We do these particular things every day. Good job of getting this backside shoulder down. When you teach the cut block, when you teach the cut block, again, your first step has to be somewhere outside the frame. Your next step is going to be basically at the crotch of your opponent, and you're going to try to get this backside forearm past his play side knee. So when he opens up right here, he's going to gain and lose ground. He's going to gain to the play, lose from the opponent. The second step is going to go basically through the crotch, and this arm is going to go across the front side knee. Now the biggest thing on this whole cut block thing is this. You have to gain to your opponent. You have to, you can't open up in position and expect him to come to you. You have to gain to your opponent, number one. The other thing, too, is you'll get a little bit of roller coaster. And what you don't want is you don't want your, your lineman to come up and then back down because he's lost 
he's lost, uh, he's lost uh, aggressiveness, and he's lost half a second. You, everybody knows in football, if you lose any time at all, you're going to be in trouble. So he cannot come up and down. He has to gain, and he has to go through the opponent's knee and down through it. Now, I'm not talking about the knee, but across his knee. And what you don't want is you don't want an up-down type situation. You want this armpit to end up past this knee, this armpit. And again, you shouldn't see our guys coming up to get down. They should come from the stance back to it. Just like that. This kid's six foot eight or whatever. He's not coming up to get down. He's opening and gaining the next steps, going through the crotch and going through the outside part of the knee. Good. We want to finish across the opponent. And we don't work on this a tremendous amount. We, we, uh, we, we are very good at cut blocking and have been, but I, I get nervous at times ending up on that shoulder, but you have to work it. You have to work it because you're going to do it in a game. Again, if you're not going to cut, then you don't need to do it. The back block. In a back block, I think there's some keys to a back block, but the first key to a back block is, is that you have to suck the air out of the block. You have got to get back on the back block. I think a lot of, a lot of problems that we have when we go to a back block is we open up and wait for the opponent to come to us. Now, everything we do is we want to get on our opponent, get our hips on them, hug them up, get in the power zone. But when you're talking about a black back block, this is the only block that we really want to knock our opponent away from us. So he's going to open up basically at a 45. His second step is going to get back up on a cover track. He's going to cover everything he sees. But on his hands, he's going to lift and jam. He's trying to knock the opponent off of him. He doesn't want to catch this block. Because, again, you're back blocking for a reason. When you back block, you're trying to trying to add space to the hole. If you just open up here at a 45 and say, oh, I don't want him to cross my face, then you really, to me, you haven't done anything. So the first thing, again, the key on a back block is to suck the air out of the block. You have got to get there in a hurry and get him off of you and try to jam him off of you. Now, you're not going to jam him off of you, but you understand what I'm saying. You've got to stuck, uh, suck the air out and get him away. You're trying to create action in the hole. If you, if you just sit right here and wait on this damn guy to come across you, we're in trouble. You have got to attack the back block. And, and again, to me, this is right. He's trying to knock him off of him. He's trying to create space. As anybody that's getting a back block, we're trying to get something hit behind him. You got some type of scheme going on there. And, and a lot of guys, a lot of guys will teach position and all those things. And the first thing we tell him is there's air right there. Suck it out of the block right now. And then work it and try to get him off of you. Down block's probably the most difficult block that there is to teach. And I think a lot of the reason is, is because a lot of guys say, well, what are you going to do with your head? Where, where, coach, where do you put his head? You put it across, you put it down the V, you put it, wh where do you put it? And, and as we talked, when I talked to you about key coaching points, the weight of your body is going to follow wherever your head is. So if your head's out in front, you're going to be a toe player. And of course, you're going to be no power. So the, the weight where you really want your head is you want it down the middle of your body. You want to stone it right down. the. You want to bristle your neck and you want to keep it right in the center of your body because if you throw it forward, all your weight's going forward. He clubs you, you're done. You keep it backside, all your weight's on the backside. He comes front side. Now you're done. So what we tell him to do is we tell him to pierce his neck straight down the middle of his body to keep his weight wide, be on a lift track, and we talk to him about looking at this V. Again, we're telling him the key to this whole thing is to keep your head out of the block. We don't want it in there. 
because we want to be able to adjust on anything at all. And then I think a lot of times too, guys, is we don't want to guess on this down block. You can't teach a guy to go aggressively. you got a down block here. You can't teach him, hey, let's be aggressive, and I want you to get down here and cover him up. I want this backside shoulder down. I want this head stuck right down the middle of your body. So your first step, you're going to cover him. Number two is going to get up the field. It's almost like a backward base block because your power shoulder, your second step's up the field. That shoulder has to be down on a lift track. You're basically teaching a reverse base block. You can't tell him to do all that stuff and then say, oh, by the way, if he goes front side, then you've got to adjust because all we've done is we taught a soft player. You can't guess on this. You have to attack your first two steps and react. But I don't think, we don't, I don't think you can teach him, oh, now if he moves somewhere, because tell him don't guess off the football. Understand hands down, feet, but don't guess off the football. Attack his pre-snap alignment. Uh, At least that's what we do. And you want that cage out of there. Don't put it in there. Down block. His first step ought to be as much as he can to cover here to get this backside shoulder down with this step up the field. Lock your head down the middle of your body. You see how he locks his head down the middle of his body right here? To me, and it may not be worth a crap, but to me, that's an outstanding down block. You see how his, you see where his cage is? I guarantee his weight is right here. Right through the right through that rear end down here to his feet. Guarantee it is. Now, you start teaching the guy on the down block to put his cage over here, I guarantee where his weight is. It's over here. You get a slight club, you're done. Teach him to put it on this half, he goes straight up the field, you're done. It's a very tough block, but that's exactly how we teach it. Don't like this one as much because I want this backside shoulder down You see how it's up? He doesn't get the coverage on the first step. You know, I do believe that you can learn as much by people doing things wrong as you do when they do it right, if you look at film, as a a teacher. When we teach a square pull, we call this a square pull, and any time that our, our guards or tackles, not our center, because our center, we're afraid he's going to step on a quarterback, but any time that our, our linemen pull to a second level guy, not, not a first level, but a second level guy, our people are gonna square pull. And we stole this again, I stole this from Bob Wiley, he was over coaching at the Bears and we went over and talked to him. And there's a couple of ways to teach it. I think Bob, I believe Bob was telling him to come basically about 12 o'clock back here, right down the midline, and then open up. We. I liked it. I just thought we could gain a little bit more. So what we say, if we're pulling to the left, he's going to take his right foot. He's going to gain as much ground as he possibly can and lose from the play. Second step's going to open. Third step is going to be downhill. This way we can get in the hole on our first, excuse me, (coughs) on our third step instead of planning to get on the hole on the fourth step. And really, if you'll look at it, He is almost, his foot is almost about right there on his first, on it. And it's kind of like a hop uh, for your, anybody you got that can't go to, you know, goes to prom and sets against the wall the whole time. They may have a little bit of trouble against, with this, but all our guys can do it. You see here, he is here, he opens up and then he's down, down here. Here's our center. He did play guard at times, so he did it too. They all have just a little bit different technique. He didn't gain quite as much there, but, but uh, uh, and I'll tell you this too, if, if you start teaching this and your guy can't do it, then let him open pull. But, but the greatest thing about this here is, is that he can see, he clears all the back block problems. He sees, the only thing I don't like particularly about this square pull is I think he should lose a little bit more ground from the line of scrimmage. If you'll see, he's gaining pretty well towards the play. He's not losing enough towards, uh, from the line of scrimmage. I don't think right here that he clears, a, he, he clears a back block. 
think he's got to be deeper here. There you go. Got to be deeper. Now, I do believe this too. I may be wrong as heck. But I believe you can take an athlete right there and you tell him to sprint over here to this pole right here. I believe that he can get there faster square pulling like we're doing right here than he can open and running. I really do. And, and our guys believe that too. But we do this every time that we're going to a second level guy, then this is how we're going to do it. Now we also, every one of our guys, we pull so much that every one of our guys has got to go uh, either way. And as you'll see here, because we're going to the right, he's going to a second level defender, a force player, what have you. Then he's going to take and gain as much as he possibly can here. Second step's open, third should be downhill. Gain and open, third should be, uh, there's one, two, three, should be down the hill. One open, down the hill, good. One open, down the hill, real good. One open, three, three should be in the hole. There you go, good. This is center, so he's just working on his open pull. Guard pulling on a power play. Down and he should be in the hole. Now, what we had to watch a little bit, and is if we gain so much and we're not losing from the play, we'll get too wide in the hole. And we don't want to do that. So I really think here we're a little too flat. Again, your guys, are, if you start teaching this square pull, they're, they're going to gain to the play pretty good with this backside leg. I think you'll have to watch it because you'll want them to lose ground. We tell them because you want to clear the back block. But really it's because you want to inside, ang inside out angle on the second level. And then, of course, all your tackles are going to have to do it, too, because of the counter play. And then here's, our, here's our, our flat pull. And basically, our flat pull we use on anybody that's on level one. So to me, this is a trap pull. I'm a guard on a counter, and I'm going to go down here and try to kick the end out or blow the end up, however you teach it. But... Now, when we're doing a flat pull, we're just going to open and gain with the plate. So we're going right. We're starting with our right foot. Open and gain and dig down the line of scrimmage. So you'll see right here, he opens, gains, and dig. Now, when we talk about dig, when we talk about a dig track, we want to try to dig one yard on his side of the ball. If we're running counter and this old boy is going to spill me or wrong arm me, he can do it on his side of the ball be just fine with us because his coach has coached him too. And if he's decided that he's going to wrong arm us, we might as well just have him not bounce to play. So we are always on a dig track. If you can see, if we were dig tracking this guy right here and square pulling the tackle on the counter, we would have perfect level so this tackle wouldn't get picked by a spill. And used to, it took so long on the counter because... For a long time, we was dig tracking both of them and telling the tackle to adjust and all that. Well, because the tackle's going to level two, if you just square pulled him because that's his rule, and this guy, he, he was on a dig track or an open pull because he's going to level one, well, you're not having to worry about the counter anymore getting squashed up, and you can use your tackle instead of you know how everybody's gone to using the fullback and all that the reason to me guys use the fullback in a counter wasn't because their tackles weren't athletic enough it was because the angle of the fullback allowed him not to get picked by that end blowing up your guard i think if you teach a dig track on level one just like this a dig track on level one and a square pull on level two, I just don't think you'll have any problem running the counter play. Don't like this one because we didn't gain to the play and we didn't get on a dig track. He felt like he's on a dig track, but he's not. Here's a good dig track. It could be a trap. It could be uh, uh, some type of counter. When we talk about double teams, and on a double team, you, you have yourself an inside and an outside guy. In this particular drill, these guys are all inside of the doubles. In other words, there'd be another guy right here double teaming. You should be able to tell the play by, again, the angles of the shoulders. So what we're going to do on a double team, we have a timing step 
and, a, and an attack step. Just like everything we do, any time that we step, number one's always position, number two's always attack. So if you, just the way we taught before, he's gonna pick this one up and put it down. Number two's gonna get up the field, up the half. This hand should come with this shoulder on a lift track. Again, if we're lifting, our base should stay wide. If we're pushing, our base will become narrow. And we have some good ones in here on a lift track and some bad ones, but this is uh, on a push track. But this is the inside of our combinations. If his shoulders stay square, we're running a, a gap scheme. If his shoulders slightly open, we're running a zone scheme. Uh, again, we talk a lot about shoulder integrity. What's, where's the back shoulders? That better be where my shoulders are too. So you, right now we're running the power right there. He should time step. Number two is going to get up the field, up the half. He's got this down shoulder right here on a left track right there. You should, his head should automatically go inside because obviously he's the inside of the two combos here. His head's got to go inside now on his linebacker responsibility. Left. Left. You can see here, now we need, need this guy to stay in here. Hell, he's got pads on. You can see right now, here's another, here's another double team. You should be able to tell the difference in those two guys with their shoulders and this kid right here with his shoulders. This guy's playing center. Right there, we'll run an inside zone to the right. I should know that. That's what the back shoulders are going to look like. His first step should be a pick them up, put them down, pound the ground, a lot of guys say. But really, where does he pick them up and put them down? Well, if he's running inside zone, he's going to pick it up and slightly lose ground slightly lose ground you'll see that you see where he slightly lose ground right there why did he do that so he could get his shoulders open with the back or guys called that bucket step or what have you number two's got to get up the field up the half you'll see this shoulder should be down that hand will be in on a one man and he'll be on a lift track see how he gets his shoulders open why he's on the inside of the double there's the linebacker Linebacker runs through, that's his. Now, you should be able to tell right here that we're running power. We're running a gap scheme. Why? His shoulders are square. If his shoulders were open, we'd be running inside zone over here. You should always be able to tell your double combos by the shoulder angle of your, of your uh, lineman. Same thing right here. This is pretty good here. If I'd get my big butt out of the way, you could really see it. But it's a time step here. Number two's up the field, up the half on a lift track. Bam, right there, real good. Now, you see where his head goes immediately? It goes right here. Why? Because he's on the inside of the double. Here's his linebacker. And a lot of times, we won't have a line. We won't have a linebacker in here to hit, but we'll have somebody here flashing a hand or two, just so he'll say one or two, because I don't want to train when you come off on a linebacker in this drill. Because number one, you ain't got nothing but linemen out here, and they ain't never played linebacker. So you tell them to fit here, and they'll fit over. You got more problems coaching line linemen to be linebackers than you do coaching your guys with their techniques. But what you do have to do, for, in my opinion, is you have to train the eye. And so as you'll see right now, when he's got that second step up the field and really nice on the left track, his eyes should be popping right here, right now. Bam, bam, now. As you'll see his head, and, and they all should be, be identical right here. Now, you'll see right here, we're okay except we're on a push track we're on a push track why because my second step did not get up the field you see that right there right there you see how number two should get up the field now i don't have a choice but to be a pusher if i'm a pusher then i have no power and i'm done i have got to everything looks kind of good and all that right into this area right here but if you're not getting the lift off the ball, you're not, you can't get a double team. Just like this, very good on the left. Now, he ain't got enough rear on him. He looks like he weighs about 245 right here. But he's got good technique, so he's going to do the best he can with what he's got right here. 
Real good. Time step, bam, right there. Now, this should be, you should be seeing some type of gap scheme. Because why? His shoulders are square. Our back's hitting the A gap. What do we want? We want our shoulders square. If this was inside zone, one way or the other, if it was this way, his shoulders should be open over here. How? Just like the darn back. Real good right here. Time step, lift, track, bam. Where'd his head go right now? Well, he's got a guy doubling. He's got to come off on this linebacker run through. See if his eyes go inside right now. There they are. Bam. Again, I don't think you can train double team combinations because you don't have any linebackers that's ever played linebackers. But boy, you sure can train the eye. And I think that's really a, a, a real key. These are all just different uh, parts of double teams. And what I, wanted, what I want to say about a double team is just this. He's inside the double, so he's going to, he's, we're running inside zone over here. So he's going to slightly lose ground. Number two is going to get up the field, up the half. This attack shoulder's got to be down on a lift track, correct? That's it. Now, he's a one-handed player. If he was a two-handed player, what would happen is his shoulders would automatically turn to this defender, and we'd be pushing against each other. That's the first thing. The other thing, when my shoulders turn here, here's my linebacker. Here's my back. I better have my shoulders open. So I'm a one-handed defender right here. This one should be loose. Anytime you're on the outside of a double team, what we teach is your first steps, just whatever it is to get your shoulders in angle with the, with the running back, you're a two-handed lifter. You're, you're always two hands out here on a lift track. So you, could see, you should see right now that we are running inside zone to the left. Now, why do we take a timing step? Well, number one, that old boy right there is closer to me than he is to him. So I, we want one pad on this guy. If, if they both weigh 300 pounds, we want 600 on him right now on a lift track. So the first reason is is because he's closer to me than he is here. I'm on time step because when I time step, he's stepping. Our, both our second steps are up the field. He's taking up the half. He's taking everything that shows, and we should be there at the same time. If we're not, we should either cut our split down, widen our split, or deepen up our guy. But the main thing is you don't want to bam, bam on this. You want two guys on one guy at the same time. The second reason is, is because if he skins across my face and I step with this right step right here first and he skins my face, I'm in major league trouble. I'm on my face is what I am. Because I've stepped here, he's skinned here, I'm, I'm, I'm in major, major league trouble. So that's the two reasons. Number one, if he skins, I'm in great shape. If I take this timing step, I can just go with it. Number two, Obviously, he's closer to me than he is to him, so we'll double team. And then once you figure out how to double team, then everything else is just shoulder integrity. What is it? What kind of double team is it? Are we gap double teaming? Are we inside zone? Right now, we're running five. We're running inside zone to the left. Everybody should see that. Same thing here. You see how he gets his second step up the field and his backside shoulders down? And then, again, they're all, they're all basically the same. And then we, you can put a little movement in it. But if you see right here, if we had, if we had uh, uh, audio on this, you should hear one pad on this guy. One. And they should both be on a left track. What we're trying to do is we're trying to put his feet together. And what, what's that mean? We're trying to leverage him out of his base. But you can tell right now we're running inside zone to the right. We're running right here. And they're all the same. All our football, uh, all our stuff's the same. It, 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 uh, it's just like right here. Now we've got a double team between the, the guard and the tackle. So here's your time step. Number two ought to get up the field. This shoulder will be down and we're running inside zone over here to the left. Now, the only problem with this block is our guard is much faster right here. 
than our tackle, so our tackle basically just has to cut his split down. We never want to really slow down our inside guy. Now here we did put a linebacker in the drill basically just to train the eyes. I'll show you here, here's an example of where the attack shoulder is up. So he's going to time step here. This is going to get up. But I want to show you a good example of why you want that attack shoulder down. You see how this shoulder right now is up? With this shoulder being up right here, we're running the ball over here. This guy right here is going to run through. Because if my attack shoulder is up, I don't have any choice at all but to turn my shoulders away from my linebacker. And as you can see right here, this guard really, really is struggling trying to get back to where if he just has leverage on a lift track with his right shoulder, his right shoulder should be down on a lift track, then he's in great shape to come off on this linebacker. But we put this in here certainly not to, not to show anything, but just that if your attack shoulder is not down, you're in, you're in pretty good trouble. You see right here on the left track, here's your timer. He's the inside guy. Here's your timer, and here's your guy going to finish. Bam, right there. I think right there it looks like we've got 600 pounds at one time on that guy on a left track. And the reason is because a nice shoulder down right there on the left. A lot of guys teach bounce and lift. We don't. We teach lift and lift. Right now, we're running, we're running a power scheme right now. So the same guys that did the double just about oh, 30 seconds ago, now they're doing a double team on a gap scheme. The back shoulders now are square. Now these guys' shoulders should be square. Is it any different at all? All that first step may be a little bit, and he's going to have to lose a little ground. But the bottom line, it's still a double team. What really has changed? the angle of the shoulders. That's really what's changed. So instead of this left guard getting his shoulder open like he did on the, on the inside zone, now he's doing it. You can see the same thing. Second step's getting up the field, up the half. Now he's getting it on a lift track vertically. Why? Because his shoulders now, this right here, bam, right there. That's exactly what our back looks like on his second step. Right there, that's what we should look like on our second step. Why? Linebacker run through at the angle of the back. And then obviously we're going to put a little movement into it and do some things of that nature. Obviously if you've got a team opponent that's going to move on you, you've got to, you've got to work on it. See right here, once we get out of position, we better get back in a hurry. Get back. So we put a little movement in, in that type of block. Now, again, this is a gap scheme. So what's the difference in, well, our shoulders. So our back's going to hit the A gap right here. We should have vertical shoulders right here. It should be level shoulders. That's the only difference in our block. It should still be on the left track. Number two ought to get up the field, up the half, and on a left track. There you go. Somebody adjusted. Now, I can't tell you who. I, I know the last time we looked at these two guys right here, uh, the guard beat the tackle there. Somebody adjusted. I don't know if the tackle uh, got a little deeper or if he widened out or he got a little close. I don't know exactly. Or he just hurried up more. But I think the key is not only you knowing what you're teaching, but them knowing, you know, he knew from the last rep that he was slow getting there. So I'm sure he cut his split down just a little bit, or he deepened up. And now you can see that they're hitting that thing at one pad now. Now they're going to be more powerful at this time, than, and they won't get split where uh, one pad and then another pad at times you have trouble getting split. Don't like this one particularly because you'll see the second step gets over here. It crosses over. And what will happen is when it crosses over, you're going to get some type of split by this, by this tackle. He's going to split this gap slightly, and you don't want that to happen.
He did do a good job of trying to work his hips back on him. Here's real good. Left. Don't push it. Left it. Don't push it. Left it. Good. And again, all our doubles are tied identically the same just with the shoulders. Once we get it down, it's, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, you see the problem here. We're beating, we're beating the tackle. So someone's, we got to speed that up. Should see by the angles of the shoulders here on this particular deal that we're running inside zone. Should get them slightly open. This shoulder should be down a little bit more so we can get that shoulder opened up. Hope you, hope you enjoyed the, the tape. I uh, hope you uh, can use something out of that. It's very simple. The way we teach is very simple. Uh, what we just went through is exactly how we teach it at our place and, and uh, hope you, you, you got something out of it and you can use it and, and uh, good luck to you.